Aloha, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Master Paul. Very pleased and happy and grateful to be connecting with you. This is a morning, so I'm going to say in my morning, Hawaii time, it's 9 a.m., it's Thursday, and I think it's the 24th. Could be wrong on that. But regardless of the time and date, happy to be here. Thank you for joining me today. And today's subject should be interesting for a lot of people. And it is on guidance and wisdom on how to stay in alignment in every moment with our chosen spiritual path. Most of us, uh, when, we, when we are in alignment, we uh, only do it at certain times of the day. It's hard for us to stay in alignment on a consistent basis. And uh, that's because life, you know, life tends to grab us and kick us in the teeth. But there is a higher wisdom on how to stay aligned. Now, to be in alignment 24-7 is certainly a, a difficult task, and it's a task of, of great, great, great beings. That's how they become great beings. They stay in alignment 24-7. So it's not a, uh, it's not a race. It's, uh, it's something where you... You take it on as part of a larger whole with an internal agreement to stay the course. But if you do follow some of this guidance and wisdom and start invoking it into your life, you can have the ability to um, practice what you preach, so to speak, practice what's important to you in an everyday moment in most of your life. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. So I hope that you're able to stick around for all those that are maybe watching this for the first time on the groups. If you don't have time, then please like and subscribe and you can always go back to my uh, Facebook and watch the recordings. <clears throat> also want to do a shout out and um, invite people to pay attention to my 52 week uh, to healing program. It's about Tao healing and it's about um, how to practice this wisdom on a more dedicated, active basis, wherein you have dedicated practice question and answer session directly related to your conditions. And uh, it's in a group format, it's on a private Zoom uh, a web webinar. And uh, this format works very well, much like an a in-person class. <clears throat> and then there's a midweek practice, and then there's a group of people that are, are working uh, through their individual stuff together and uh, releasing physical, emotional, mental blockages. And it's, uh, it's called 52 Weeks to Self-Healing because they, you know, most of us are over 30 years old that are watching this and we might have some blockages in our life that might take more than a week or two to resolve. So I hope that you uh, review this course and join it. <clears throat> you can join anytime. There's no start or end time. It will be ongoing. And, but it just initiated uh, last week. Also, there is a video you can watch that gives, it's basically the first week of teaching. I put it up for free, so you have a pretty good foundation of the style and practice in the course. So let me see who's joined us here today. Welcome, Nelson. Welcome, Erica. Welcome, uh, Joan Margaret. Welcome, Elizabeth. Maria. Welcome, also, Seema. Welcome, Catherine. Welcome, Monica. Welcome also to Kristen Rojas. Thank you for being my support group, support team. Welcome Peggy Blake. Welcome also to uh, Edom and Jolene Jerusalem. Welcome also to Jamie Vargas and Donnie Rollins. And I might have missed one or two people, um, but as you may have noticed, I can now click a little button that waves at you, kind of acknowledging that I can see you. Facebook just made that available to me on my little cell phone here. So that's a cool little feature they just added. So thank you all for coming. And thank you for clicking on the share button to let other people know about this. If I haven't seen your name pop up, it's because Facebook, for whatever reason, didn't tell me about you. So you might want to say hi and then I'll know you're there. I um, believe I've acknowledged everybody. Julie Abbott, welcome. Okay. So thank you all for coming. So let us go ahead and connect heart to heart, soul to soul. Welcome, Crystal Valencia, and Marina Margarita. <coughs> Welcome, Peggy Blake. 
So let us connect heart to heart, soul to soul. Placing our hands in soul light, soul service, hand position. Dropping our left hand in front of our heart center. Welcome, Teresa Lyer. Close our eyes and I'll invite in the beings of light. For those with third eye, you might be surprised how many beings of light come. Dear our beloved divine creator, all layers of the divine, the Tao, the source, all of the angels, healing angels, archangels, masters, ascended masters, lamas, gurus, sifu, saints, buddhas, and bodhisattvas, heavens, generals, and soldiers, all heavens, animals, the soul of our individual heavens, teams, guides, angels, and saints, all the beings of light, of the planets, stars, galaxies, and universes. We love you all, honor you all, respect you all. We invite most humbly and sincerely your presence here today for this guidance and this wisdom on how to stay in alignment on our spiritual journey in every moment of our life. We thank you for all that you do for us visibly and invisibly, and we can never be grateful enough for your blessings. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Dear the dear source soul song of love, peace, and harmony, transmitted to all souls and all universes, we love you, we honor you, respect you, and we ask for your presence at this time. We invite all souls and all universes to chant love, peace, and harmony with us. And as we chant, let us join hearts and hearts, soul to soul. For anybody new watching for the first time, it's a mantra, and it is in 40 languages. And by chanting it, you are serving humanity. You are also clearing, self-clearing, many blockages. So let us begin. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, 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 Li. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula. Wo ai wo xian er ling, wo ai tran ran lei, ong ling rang er mu er shang, shang ai ping an he xie, shang ai ping an he xie. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. How, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. So welcome also to Joy Home, Aloha. Welcome also to Dave V and welcome Nina Midway. Thank you all for coming, thank you for joining. So today, uh, last night when I posted this, it was before I got up this morning about 10 hours in advance, I asked Kevin, you know, what to talk about today and actually didn't get any response for about, I don't know, three, four minutes. And uh, then I heard that, you know, people are having difficulty being, you know, on, on spiritual task uh, in their life. They kind of vacillate in and out. So showing of hands, how many of you are like that? You know, sometimes you're, you're just, you know, do diligent, do whatever you have to do to get through life. And then you take that half hour at night to align to your, to your uh, creator or, or whoever you align to. Showing of hands, how many people are like that, right? Welcome, Jack. Welcome also, Lisa Patterson. And so I know that I have been and still am um, very much like that. <clears throat> and it's a process. When uh, I started training with, with Master Shah about eight, nine years ago, he said, keep your mind in your lower abdomen. That was his verbiage. Keep your mind in your lower abdomen. And you're like, what? Keep your mind, you know, what? Um, I didn't have the wisdom then. Now he says, keep your mind in your Ming Men point. So we'll go into a couple of different aspects of this guidance and wisdom. But generally speaking, it is a process to keep our mind in the right place and be in control of our mind versus our mind being in control of us. Welcome, Janine. Great to see you here. 
most of the time, our mind tends to control us. Now, how do we know? Well, because we find ourselves in places of unpleasant emotions or unpleasant reactions. That's our gauge. Are we in alignment with spirituality, our, our, our compass, or are we out of alignment? If we find ourselves in an emotional imbalanced place, <laughs> we're not in alignment. That's not to mean that, that it's not okay. I mean, sometimes things that create sorrow are present. Um, however, there is spiritual approaches to that where one could have a joyful experience, even in the loss of a loved one, for example. A lot of it is perspective. So from the spiritual perspective, life is spirituality. Every breath, every moment, every piece of food we put in our mouth, Every word that comes out of our mouth can and should be spiritual or in alignment with our chosen path. Now, some people have chosen the dark side, so, you know, we don't want to talk about that. But in terms of those that have chosen the light side, uh, it is rather on the difficult side to have every breath, every thought, every word, every action be from a place of purity and intention. Most of the time we have intention but life happens and kind of jerks us out of our purity and our intention. So how do we resolve that? Well we can apply a lot of the, the ancient wisdoms. We can apply the wisdoms of uh, the Buddhist teachings for example. See no evil, hear no evil, think no evil, speak no evil. Kind of common sense, right? Almost all of our karmas that create blockages on our spiritual journey are because we have thought unpleasant things, uh, spoken unpleasant things, did unpleasant actions. So the obviousness is to stop thinking, seeing, speaking, and doing unpleasant things. And that includes, you know, being angry at others. Uh, I had a student contact me a couple days ago and they said, you know, you were pretty angry on that live stream. You might want to. Uh, check yourself and they said it in a very loving way so I said you know I definitely uh, have to take a look at that if that's what the perception was of the student I can't deny that and so I took a look at it and I recognized that I probably did have some some excess anger now I was purposefully on that live stream as being purposefully strong worded because I needed to shake people even my teacher shakes us sometimes and he turns on some strong words and I needed to be strong worded in that live stream but she was correct in that I did carry some energies into it that didn't need to be there and so I actually paid for myself to receive a blessing for um, um, releasing anger because certainly I'm no better or or, or lower than anybody else, we're all equal on this playing field, and I don't need to bring additional karma to the table. So that's an example of spiritual awakeness and awareness. Do what you can, do what you need to um, clean yourself up, so to speak. Now, all of us have exceedingly different lives. All of us have exceedingly different responsibilities, um, commitments. Um, some have children, some do not. Some have jobs, some do not. Um, some of us are fine in our jobs, some are not. But regardless, we interact. And it is the interaction, honestly, this is, this is the crux of the matter. It is our interaction with other human beings in almost every case that creates the conditions in which we either are stay in alignment or out of alignment with our spiritual journey. If we were sitting on a mountaintop alone as a monk and our other monk friends are walking around us and let's say it was a silent monastery, we would only be responsible for our thoughts. We don't have to watch our speaking because we don't speak, right? We don't go around bumping into each other on the street, you know, offering angry eyes to each other. This is what we do in normal life, not sitting upstairs in a monastery on top of a mountain. So how easy is it to stay in a place of purity in those conditions? Much easier, I promise you, much easier. In this thing we call life, where we're walking around bumping into each other in elevators and, and having to deal with kids and money and jobs and all of these things that create conditions known as stress, it is much, much, much more difficult to stay in a place of alignment to our spiritual journey. So this is also why those of us that are in this playing field have a far, far, far greater set of experiences and um, opportunity for leveling up. 
kind of like a game, if you will. But what do I mean by leveling up? Everything is recorded. The Akashic Record records everything, all your thoughts, all your words, all your actions. And the condition of yin and yang, or the condition of opposites, the condition of, of this life, create great opportunity to succeed or great opportunity to fail in this particular round um, in our alignment, further alignment to our spiritual process. <clears throat> so the greater the juxtaposition of conditions, the greater the opportunity. So if there is great um, tragedy, and then there is great compassion and great love and great service and saving of life. As far as the Akashic Record is concerned, that offered massive, massive, massive value to your spiritual journey because you opened up to the true nature of who you are. Compassion, love, service. But why did it require such great tragedy before something like that came? And so this is the nature of the spiritual journey. We want to walk that talk in every moment. Sometimes not as easy as it sounds. Uh, welcome Heather Rasmussen. Welcome also to um, uh, Randy Agustin Lecter. I think I've acknowledged everyone else. Thank you all for joining. Uh, well, Lisa Patterson. Welcome Jack Poulton. And welcome also to Dallas Crutchfield. So. I'm going to do a flow now. I'm going to ask Heaven to offer some additional guidance on this. One of the things that when I received this uh, message yesterday, it said, let us, you know, share. Um, so I'm just going to let them borrow my mouth and see what Heaven has to say about this. Welcome, Robin. So for those that are unfamiliar, this is basically uh, receiving a message and speaking that message. Okay. It's called Divine Flow. If you're interested in learning how to do it, then join my open weeks, uh, my uh, 12 weeks to open spiritual channels program. Okay. Dear heaven, there are beloved divine. To the soul of the question, how to stay in alignment 24 seven with our spiritual journey and the highest and best answer. Could you please come borrow my mouth? Thank you. How? This is Kuan Yin, Buddha of Compassion. It is my great honor to speak to each of you on this day. I am called millions of times a day to serve others. They plead for me to intercede and assist them all over this world. It is my greatest honor to serve these souls who in many cases are lost. They are lost because they have forgotten who they are. They cannot see the light that I see. They do not remember their strength and power. Their soul is sometimes confused and unsure. Often I do not give them what they ask for, I give them what they need. <clears throat> and in the waving of one of my 1,000 arms, I deliver to them a series of clearings that to bring to them what actually they need which in most cases is the steps to realign to their spiritual journey. Many place power outside of themselves. This is a mistake. For your beloved divine is within your soul 
resides within. And it is when one brings themselves to life with an inner knowing, inner love, and inner power that they can handle whatever comes to them. They sit on their knees or in lotus position and beg for intercedence to remove their pain. They have not yet realized that the conditions that are predominant in that moment can literally be dissolved by love, forgiveness, self-compassion, and service to others. How can it be so simple? Humanity has yet to realize the simplicity of aligning to one's spiritual journey. It literally can be as simple as loving yourself first and loving others with your eyes, your words, and your thoughts. Forgiving yourself for any unpleasant thoughts, words, and actions, and then asking others the same. Being compassionate to others and of service to others literally aligns you almost instantly to the power that runs through you. This is little understood, but of the highest importance. This it was my path, and this is the path of all what you call great masters. We give our credit to the beloved divine inside us. Ponder this guidance and wisdom, dear ones. Listen again. The big way is extremely simple. Release the patterns of reaction and response and replace them with love, forgiveness, compassion, and service. And your life will move into alignment much faster. Your problems will dissolve much quicker and your life will become much happier. It has been my deepest and highest honor to serve you with this wisdom on this day. This is Kuan Yin, your unconditional servant. How, how, how. Thank you, Kuan Yin, for delivering that beautiful message. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <coughs> so welcome also to Ali Fest. And welcome Janice, welcome Jan Christie, welcome Dean Forbes, welcome Christiana de Kupua. So it's a nice flow, huh? It's a nice message from Kuan Yin, very, very pure message. I tell you, sometimes it is that simple. It's not necessarily so easy to walk that talk. But this is very high level wisdom, nevertheless. Welcome Karina from Norway. Welcome Frankie. Welcome Thuiba. And so, <clears throat> based on what Kuan Yin is sharing, love ourselves first and then love others. How can we love others if we don't love ourselves first? Now, some of you say, I love myself fine. Okay. Is that reflected outside of you? If you do truly love yourself fine, do you love all those outside of you? No judgment, no criticism. 
if there is judgment, if there is criticism, is there, if there is, I love you, 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 but not you, 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 then there is still some adjustments to make. I can't say that. I am so far from that, I can't even get close to it at this point. Uh, forgiveness. We have to forgive ourselves. For what? What do I need to forgive myself for? <clears throat> so yes, this will be on replay. And thank you, Catherine, for sharing. Catherine saw just huge amounts of light. Welcome, Suki Singh. Why do we need to forgive ourselves? I didn't do anything wrong. Or what do I need to forgive myself for? Well, do you judge the way you look? Do you judge your height, your weight? Do you judge um, your hair or your hair color? Do you judge any physical attribute whatsoever? Do you judge yourself um, because you don't do this or this or that enough? Uh, do you judge yourself by putting yourself down? Some are the opposite. I had a student contact me this morning and they indicated they had uh, significant depression and, and it was it was an enlightening moment for them. They're like, you know, I watched one of your videos and, and you know, I recognize I, I don't really have friends. The ones I have are false friends because I'm false. And this is what they were saying. They said, you know, I'm angry, I'm mean to people, I'm uh, greedy, and I need to change all this. This is, this is what they said. I'm like, wow, great awakening. You know, thank you. Uh, a lot of us have aspects of this. I have aspects of selfishness I'm still working through, lots of them. Um, so we all have these kinds of blockages. In order to walk through life with spiritual awakening, the first step is recognizing the places in our life that are not pure. And then loving ourselves and forgiving ourselves for those lack of purities, wherever they are. We love ourselves because the obvious but part of the love for self <clears throat> boils actually back to early, early childhood when we were taught necessarily to place love outside of ourself. Okay? This is not a small statement here. A lot of us were taught to place love outside of ourself, power outside of ourself. What did Kuan Yin share with us? She said one of the biggest mistakes was that we put power outside of ourself. We don't acknowledge our own abilities and our own alignment to the source creator within. <clears throat> we are all one, as everyone has heard, but in order to heal the outside and walk uh, in a spiritual journey, we must start from the inside. And that starts with recognizing whenever we have not loved ourselves and forgiven ourselves. And it's easy to find it. Just look for any area in your life that is out of balance. That's where the love is. That's where the lack of love is. That's where the lack of forgiveness is. So, in Master Shah's teaching, welcome Qixing, Master Qixing. Welcome also to uh, anyone else whose name I might have missed. Master Shah's teaching on love and forgiveness are very simple. We offer and ask for love. We offer and ask for forgiveness. When we do this on a consistent basis, remember this is not a race, this is a life experience, okay? And remember also, we're here on the ground, uh, we're not sitting on a monastery in the mountaintop where things are easy. We're at the ground level on a very uh, dense playing field with lots and lots of people to interact with. And in this constant interaction, we have ample opportunity to purify our soul, hearts, minds and body. But how can we address the way we are externally until we address the way we are internally first? So let's do a practice together to address internal imbalances. And then it's just a matter of bringing a purified inner self, more filled with power, to our external world. If we love and forgive ourselves internally, much easier to be loving and forgiving externally. Hmm? So let's do that. Everybody who wishes to join in this practice, please sit up straight. Welcome Zilke. Welcome Christina Walker. We bring our back away from the back of the chair. Place your tongue on the roof of your mouth. 
And we place our hands in the soul light, soul service hand position, which is like a prayer position, but we drop the left hand in front of the heart center. And we close our eyes, and I will walk you through this guided practice. And you can repeat after me uh, if you would like. Dear my beloved divine creator, my source, my name is, state your name three times, Paul Fletcher, Paul Fletcher, Paul Fletcher. Dear my beloved soul, my heavens, teams, guides, angels, and saints, I love you all, honor you all, bow my head to each and every one of you, and thank you <coughs> for being on my heavens team and for guiding me. I ask for your presence at this time to assist me to release self-love blockages and forgiveness blockages that may inhibit me from aligning to my spiritual journey. I am extremely grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And now we follow a wisdom with Master Shah of forgiveness. So if comfortable, continue to repeat. Dear my soul, I sincerely apologize for this and all times that I have thought negatively about any of my physical attributes. If I have ever put myself down for the way I look, the way I talk, the way I speak, the way my weight, any aspect of my physicality, if I have created blockages on my spiritual journey in this way, please forgive me. Dear all souls that I have ever communicated with by thought, word, or action, if I have ever put you down by thought, word or action about your physical attributes, hair color, size, weight, sex, race, religion, anything if I have ever put you down on your physical view, I humbly and sincerely apologize. Dear my beloved soul, if I have ever created unnecessarily or incorrectly, emotions of anger, fear, greed, emotions of sadness, grief, worry, depression, anxiety. If I have ever held on to these emotions unnecessarily to hide from my feelings because I was not empowered to speak them or share them. I sincerely apologize for bringing these into our journey. I ask most sincerely for your assistance, my beloved soul, to release these unpleasant emotions. Please assist me to be kind and compassionate to myself. Please assist me, guide me to others where I can share these feelings and not hold them in and create unpleasant conditions. To all souls in all time, if I have created conditions in your life of extreme worry, conditions of anxiety or depression, if I have brought into your experience great fear, great worry, great grief or sadness, anxiety, or more. I sincerely apologize. I recognize that I may have made some very unpleasant thoughts, words, or actions that created these very unpleasant emotions for you. And that may be why I am having some of these in my life. As a reminder, and if I have brought these unpleasant emotions to you because of my thoughtlessness, I sincerely, sincerely apologize. Dear my beloved soul, all of my heaven's teams, please forgive me for all of my negative thoughts, all of my attitudes about life, about this, about that, those people, this religion, that belief. 
please forgive me all of these negatives. I do not wish to carry them around in my life. I wish to release negativity and carry positivity. And I ask forgiveness for bringing these unpleasant things into my life. I recognize that they may have come to me because I spoke negatively about others. I thought negatively about others. I acted negatively towards others. I recognize that this may be a karmic experience. To all the souls in all time, if I have offered negative thoughts, words, or actions, I sincerely, sincerely apologize and ask most humbly for your forgiveness. I do not wish to make these same mistakes again of bringing negative emotions and negative thoughts, words, and actions to others. I wish to clear my own blockages so that I can walk on my spiritual journey, bring love, forgiveness, and compassion to others. I sincerely apologize. To all those on their spiritual journey, if I have ever offered inappropriate, wrong, or incorrect teachings on how to move forward on your spiritual journey, if I have ever offered guidance that has taken you away from your highest and best path, in any time. Again, I sincerely apologize and ask your forgiveness. I ask my beloved Heaven's team, my beloved soul, and my beloved Divine Creator to please bless my life, to further align to my soul journey. Please bless me to stay in my power to forgive myself whenever I have a negative thought come up, to forgive myself whenever I judge others. Please bless me to see it instantly and ask forgiveness instantly and offer that other love instead of a judgment or a criticism. Please bless me, my beloved Creator and my Heaven's team and my soul to search where did that judgment come from? Where did that criticism come from? Help me to remove that root of lack of self-love inside me that caused those unpleasant thought words and actions to come out. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So now we will chant simple words that gather light and love into our heart. We will chant divine love and divine light. Uh, scratch that. We'll chant divine love and divine forgiveness. <clears throat> the big way is extremely simple, as Kuan Yin has just said. Asking for love, asking for forgiveness, chanting for love and chanting for forgiveness carries extraordinary frequencies. This is what many of the monks do on the mountain. We are on the playing field. We can do the same thing, but we have to be more conscious. So let us chant, visualizing great love coming to our heart center, clearing blockages, blessing all those around us that we have harmed. Let us chant divine love, and then we will chant divine forgiveness. Divine love, sending your love to all of those we've ever harmed. Divine love, divine love, divine love, divine love, divine love, divine. Divine forgiveness. Divine forgiveness. 
Divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness. Offer forgiveness to all who have hurt you. Offer forgiveness to yourself. Divine forgiveness. Divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness. Divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness. Offer love to yourself. Receive the love in all of yourselves, releasing the emotions, releasing the mindsets, releasing the negativity. Divine love. Divine love, divine love, divine love, divine love, divine love. Divine love, divine love, divine love, divine love, divine love. Divine love. Repeat after me. Dear all the souls that I or my ancestors may have ever brought suffering to by inappropriate thoughts, wrong words, unpleasant actions, I sincerely apologize. I ask your unconditional forgiveness that I may not make the same mistakes again, that I may move forward on my journey and release these blockages. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Continue to offer blessings. Divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness, Divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness. Divine forgiveness, I forgive you, please forgive me, bring love, peace, harmony, bring love, peace, harmony, repeat. I forgive you, you forgive me, bring love, peace, harmony, bring love, peace, harmony, I forgive you. Please forgive me, bring love, peace, harmony, bring love, peace, 
peace, harmony. And now see yourself and all of these souls very happy together, all of you shining brightly, self-clearing tons and tons and tons of blockages, all of the darkness rising up to the light, leaving all of your bodies. I forgive you. Please forgive me. Bring love, peace, harmony. Bring love, peace, harmony. I forgive you. Please forgive me. Bring love, peace, harmony. Bring love, peace, harmony. Three more times. Use your heart. Use your love. I forgive you. Please forgive me. Bring love, peace, harmony. Bring love, peace, harmony. I forgive you. Please forgive me. Bring love, peace, harmony. Bring love, peace, harmony. Last round. I forgive you. Please forgive me. Bring love, peace, harmony. Bring love, peace, harmony. And with your eyes closed, bow your head to all of the souls that we have asked forgiveness from. Bow your head to your own soul and to yourself for forgiving yourself. Be grateful for loving yourself and loving others. And when you are ready, open your eyes. You're welcome to share what this experience was like for you. And so, to conclude the wisdom that was shared today, many of us place blame outside of ourselves for the fear, the anger, the worry, the depression, the sadness, the grief. Many of us put power outside of ourself. We don't take responsibility for our problems. We don't take responsibility for the mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs. We don't take responsibility for all of the unpleasant thoughts, words, and actions that fly out of our mouth. We blame others. The wisdom to align to our spiritual path in every moment is to start inside. Self-love, self forgive. How do you know when you have done enough? When externally you are only offering love. You are only being love. You are offering forgiveness regardless of what people bring to you. Because the outside is a reflection of the inside. When we align ourselves to our source through practices, through meditation, through self-forgiveness, through self-love, when we take responsibility for everything outside of us, as a mirror of what's happening inside. When we do practices like this today, every day, wake up, truly do forgiveness to self, truly love self, truly realize that power is inside, the Divine Creator is inside. And by doing this, when you are walking, ah, oh, my beloved Divine Creator, thank you for being inside me at all times. Thank you for helping me monitor my thoughts so I'm not judgmental. If you are judgmental, you see somebody walk by and they weigh 300 pounds and this judgmental thought comes in you, man, this person's obese. Ask instantly for forgiveness. Please forgive me, that beautiful soul. I apologize. Uh, and then ask yourself, where did this unpleasant thought come from? Almost always, it's, it's a, um, a way of putting yourself above another, right? That means that there's a lack of self-love. So you need to love yourself. 
So you have to monitor when you are externally uh, placing things outside of you, judgments, criticisms, whatever it might be. Love yourself, forgive yourself, catch yourself if you're operating in wrong thoughts, words, and actions. Don't let yourself get away with it. These are conscious practices to stay in alignment with your spiritual journey. Okay. So welcome Rushanda, welcome Cornelia, welcome Carl, welcome Carrie, welcome Nurma and Esther. Thank you all for coming. I know you came in there on the latter half of this. This is recorded. A um, lot of great wisdom today. Kuan Yin offered some beautiful messages as well. So for those that are stuck, you just need a boost. I do offer uh, a special blessings. Crown chakra blessings are amazing for any of these things we've talked about today. Self-love issues, forgiveness issues, uh, releasing uh, significant emotions. Um, so check in with me if you if you're in need of one of those blessings. There's a small honor fee, but it's very reasonable for the power of the shift that can occur. So I'll offer gratitude. We thank the divine, the Tao, the source. We thank all of the beings of light who have come to offer their service today. I thank all of you who have come to offer your service today. I love you all. I forgive you all. I ask forgiveness if I've harmed any of you in any lifetime. I thank you for your presence and I thank you for sharing this to let other people know about it. And I will return um, on Tuesday. I want to invite anybody that missed it that I have a program that just started. It's a self-healing program. This is a good example of self-healing. This one is dedicated. I work through Master Shah's books week by week, lots of practice, and it's interactive webinar where it's question and answer. It's very interactive, very affordable, only $100. You get three months worth of service. So follow the links, look at Kristen Rojas' posts. She puts the links in there and you can learn more about it. Very, very affordable and have lots of great value to help you reverse uh, emotional blockages, mental blockages, physical pain and suffering. All of these things can be reversed if you join that course and stick with the practices, okay? So I look forward to serving you. Thank you all for coming. We say three thank yous, three love yous, and three gong songs. Gong song is Mandarin Chinese. It means to all the souls respectfully return. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you, love you, love you. Gong song, gong song, gong song. I look forward to serving you. Please go check out my 52 Weeks of Self-Healing course. Bye-bye, everybody.